Hello, my name is Brittany Nickel, principal of East Harden Middle School. Um, this summer we have offered two types of camp, summer camps for our students, all called Destination Acceleration. Um, we have had interventions going on for students who have um, struggled a little bit during NTI this year. We have had them in so they can get caught up on reading and math. Um, as well as social studies and science. And then we've had enrichment for our gifted and talented students. They have taken some field trips talking about systems, um, so planetarium and the flight center. And then um, all of our other students have taken a trip to the Hardin County Extension office to learn about where trash goes once we throw our trash away. So we have serviced about 50 to 60 students um, throughout our camp. And so uh, we've had a lot of fun with Kona Ice and Baskin Robbins uh, playing dog ball and uh, so we have just enjoyed having our students this summer okay this morning to start class you a couple of weeks ago as one of the ways to help you understand economic concepts better in this day and time in the United States most expressly we have entrepreneurs our government at state level and at federal level are encouraging people to set up small businesses it's been open season so to speak uh, where anybody could try to come up with an idea that would sell or open up a store that would sell whatever they wanted to promote, whether it's warehousing, an individual store, or whatever. But an entrepreneur, you, we talked about it, I gave you some techniques, you did your own, and I told you you're working alone. I knew it was coming for you to work in a group. I just didn't know exactly what time. So now you're going to come together, it's going to be Case, Hadley, uh, Clark and then Raven and each group you four you four you four this is one two three four five six seven the groups one two three four five six seven in your groups you're going to brainstorm and it may be something you've already done it may be where uh, one of you had an idea and the rest of you you haven't seen one another's uh, entrepreneurships that you came up with individually so that should be fun. Now you've got some prior knowledge, working knowledge, and you've got to pool your resources. So I'm going to look up here. Brock, Brock thinks it's, it's the best thing to do is open up a shop where there um, is nothing but technology. Uh, people need it. I don't care if, if it's anything to do with a, um, a small uh, digital device to a large one. But he brings in a stock, and you know you see those shops. But location is everything. What makes a business sell? What do you need? What? It, remember I told you, what? You need what? Products. Products, but remember I told you I can sit and make shoes all day, fill up a warehouse, but I just keep making shoes and I just keep making shoes, but what has to happen? Yeah, you've got to tell somebody. You've got to advertise. And remember, I said the most significant thing you do is advertise what you have. And if all you do is write a few words on paper, and someone commented where the panhandlers are at the stoplights that there's this bright yellow sign with black lettering. Well, the bright yellow is what gets your attention first, and then if you read it. So uh, color matters. What did we say the number one advertising color is? Red. Red. And then it's yellow. yellow. Good. Okay. Well, let's, let's start off with our learning target. So I want you to determine the importance of advertising for entrepreneurs to sell their goods and services. It may be that, Camden, you come up with a way to, uh, well, I like this news I saw yesterday where a person was given a ticket because they were sleeping while their Tesla was <laughs> going down the road. They were, uh, they were asleep while the car was operating itself. So what if Camden comes up with a, something for, say, a lawnmower to run itself? You don't even have to touch it. Okay, he, he could come up with that idea, but how are you going to sell it? Ads. What? With ads. ads, with advertising. So it's very important, no matter what you have, if it's a new haircut, a way to cut hair, if it's a new kind of jeans, if it's a, a different kind of case for your phone, whatever it is, you have to advertise. Okay, so the criteria for success. We defined an entrepreneur. That's someone who what? Takes a risk, Takes a risk in starting a business identify cho uh, choices of goods and services. So the difference in goods and services, goods are? Well, they're tangible. Let's look with tangible, something you can see that you can touch. And then services are? One at a time, what? 
Yes, like mow your yard, someone changes your tires, someone uh, at the dry cleaners cleaning your clothes, a nurse, uh, uh, a person who is a housekeeper or, or comes to your home to clean the house, teachers, doctors. All right, then the third thing, analyze advertisements. We did that because of strategies. So what are some of the strategies for advertising? Repetition. Repetition. It gets on your nerves, saying the same thing over and over again, but it gets the attention like it's intended to do. Another. Bandwagon. Bandwagon means what? Uh, where someone else is doing it. And yeah, they have an uh, Apple phone. I, I want one too. Uh, and what was that other one we talked about earlier? Uh, Cause and effect, yes. If you don't use this product, then you're going to be all wrinkled. And if you do use it, you're not going to be wrinkled. Two different products. No one wants to be wrinkled. <laughs> so anyway, four, create an authentic entrepreneurship. So that's what you're going to do, and you're going to create ads. If you remember when we did your individually, well, individual ones, I gave you the Mimos cookie flyer. You'll remember. So one person is responsible for that in each group. You're working together to create uh, an entrepreneurship, sharing your ideas. If you recall the business card, remember, you carry the same theme throughout all of your advertising, whether a billboard or whether it is a flyer or if it's a business card. So one person in each group be responsible for that. Okay, I'm going to ask you to read through those as soon as I turn you loose. I'm going to go table to table to see what's going on, okay? So, your job is going to be to come up with four ways of advertising. I've just given you the cookie sheet for Mimos cookies for a flyer and also for a business card, but you're responsible for a billboard. And one other thing, what was it? A web page, there you go. A make believe, uh, an example of create a web page because your advertising is on the web page too. I know from listening to you when we've worked on research all year that it's annoying to you to have pop up ads. They're everywhere. Pop up ads are everywhere. And you say, it's just in the way. It's just in the way. But that's what you want to do. You want to have an ad and it needs to be fast that people will buy from the internet. You remember me telling you about this guy, John Nichols? He and his wife started out in a small business buying a few cars that had been total and they kept the parts from them. And he said whenever he went on the internet to, to buy and sell across the United States that he became a millionaire because so many people are looking at the internet and they're buying and selling on the internet. Some of you may have bought, or your parents maybe, bought um, eBay or Craigslist, that kind of thing. Uh, you're not old enough to be buying on the internet. Parents may allow you to use a credit card and you do that. I don't know if that's true or not, but at any rate, uh, you're the number one uh, consumer in our United States. So somehow or another, it's, it's happening. So anyway, questions to this point? Okay, I have a, something else I want to show to you. Important that Mima is here today, especially since you have my flyer and because you have my business card. And so, <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? Oh, me. So, Mima's cookies. I have cookies, and I'm willing to share with you. This so also has Mima's cookies, 270-777-7777. Uh, and by the way, I saw that ad in Louisville just, <laughs> just yesterday on the side of a van for someone for heating and air conditioning, 777-7777. Some of you took off the letters on the keypad of a telephone and came up, came up with uh, your own special telephone number, like 1-800-222, um, well, 22T, just what National Board is. So you pay big bucks to have those special letters. I like my glasses. Just got to ask you. They're, they're terrible. Now, this is my success story. It's me, Ma. This was in the Courier Journal. And that's me on the front page right there. So this entrepreneur kind of thing is real. Questions to this point? <laughs> oh, 
it is my pleasure to, to share my cookies from my kitchen, from my heart. What does the ad say? What does the ad say here? A pinch of what? And what do we call that whenever you have a, a series of words like that? Slogan. Good. Who said that? Very good. Yep. That's a slogan. And then what is the picture, picture of the cookies about? What do we call that? Not a slogan. A logo. Good. Good, Jackson. Okay. Someone make me proud and tell me why this is such an important concept to study. Raise your hand to tell me. Why is it so important to study entrepreneurs? Good. How about it back there, Kirsten? Thank you, Mom. <laughs> You're welcome. You get older and more you know, Super. Do you necessarily have to be older? No. 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 There was a young man in Ronnieville that was 17 years old. I don't know what he came up with, but I, it hasn't been too far back. I had an old magazine, and he had become a millionaire by the time he was 23. But his ideas were uh, about a, a device that was time-saving for agriculture. I don't know what it was. Uh, it didn't say it, but it was just a blurb about his success. So can anybody in here be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Absolutely. It's real life class. There is this small business training with, that's provided by government services um, through school, through EC3. Um, we've got all kinds of support systems for people who want to be in business. Remember how we talked about the small farms? You said 90% in the 1800s of the people were on small farms. If you remember that, give me this. Yeah, so small farms carried this nation in the 1800s. What do you think carries our nation in this day and time? What is it? Technology. But, but technology, but what are we studying here? Entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs, yes. Entrepreneurs are the people, small business is what's stimulating our economy the, just the most rapidly of anything else in our nation. Not the big corporations like the plantations that we compared to working farms to for the 1800s. Instead, it's entrepreneurships. People taking a risk in business. Do all of them succeed? No. no. But if you don't take that risk, you won't know. What about when we talked about snappy tomato pizza across from Papa John's? Was that a good idea? No. Not really. Not when you've got are very successful uh, pizza uh, establishments all around you, and, but those people were willing to take a risk, okay? We've got a small ice cream, uh, and you may be familiar with them. They're Doosters over on Mulberry. Those people have taken a risk. They've been very successful, but they're not like Baskin Robbins. They're not, and so, but they're convenient. Uh, the extraordinary ice cream uh, I don't know who makes that, but it's, it's just really exciting to go there and see how many people say, whoa, this is really good stuff. Well, uh, Wyatt, to address Wyatt's comment, he said, why not Peepaw's cookies? Why not Peepaw's cookies? Okay, one at a time, tell me, raise your hand. Why, why not pe 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 Peepaw's cookies? Well, Peepaw didn't, but why would a Peepaw necessarily not start a business? What do, we, what do we connect cookies, that, that comfort food, with? Grandma. Grandma. So it's more likely that someone would uh, look for Meemaw's cookies than they would Peepaw's. Not that Peepaw couldn't have cookie shop, a bakery, because there are a lot of men who are chefs and they cook a lot. Place your name on these papers, class. Attention back up here, last thing. I will give you the paper. You're not going to have time this morning to make the ads, but I will give the business card like I did to you for you as an individual, and I'll give you the flyer paper and the billboard. Okay? Questions? Anything? Okay, make me proud. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Rachel Pitts. I'm teaching summer school here at East Harden Middle School, and we're working with language arts students in the areas of um, writing, grammar, and mechanics. And we've worked on some reading, and what we're doing today is we are identifying famous visionaries that we've studied about uh, throughout school this entire year. Uh, the children are going to run to the middle of the court, find a visionary, and try to identify them correctly to win the game. Go! Come on, Cedric, run! <clears throat> Oh, 
Bob Seeger. Correct. Good job. No, not correct. Try again. Put it down. Uh, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Good. All right. Back to the line. They brought a card to me that means that they can correctly identify the visionary. Um, if they're incorrect, they return the card to the middle of the circle. And if they are correct, they get to keep the card for a point. And the winner at the end of the game with the most cards wins. We're going to do it again. Ready? Remember, only bring it to me if you know what the correct answer is. Go. Cedric, are you sure? Go back to the line if you're not sure. Oh no, it's okay. It's getting tough. It's getting tough, you know? Let me see. Not Elvis, who else is from Texas? Can you think of another one from Texas? No. All right, put it back in the circle. We'll try again. To ask a friend, don't hurt each other. Be careful and safe, go. Cedric, you want to stand here with me? No. No? You're going to get a card? Go get one. All right, if you would like a hint, come here. If you want a hint, let me see what you have. Start with a B. Last name is Newton. What was his first name? Give me a hint. Oh, I know. You really want a hint. There's a pizza place that has the same name. Domino's. Not Domino's. Pizza Hut. Little. little Little Timmy. Little Jimmy. Caesars. Little Caesar. I knew it. Founder of Microsoft. First name is Bill. What's his last name? He was a famous magician. Uh, I don't know any famous magician. Ask your friends. His first name is Michael. What's his last name? Michael. His first name is Michael. What's Michael Jordan? Good job. Go put your card up. Starts with a C. She's married to Jay Z. She's married to Jay Z. Oh, I know. No, she's married to Jay Z, the rap star. This is Mike. Phelps. 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 Good. Is that middle? Huh? The, yes. I don't know his name though. <laughs> put him down yeah, put him down. I don't know. I'm running back. All right, good job. Now, is if you have points on the board, go get your cards. Okay. We're gonna have the championship round. So if students picked up a blank card, then that means the question is of my choosing which means it can be kind of all over the place depending on what we've talked about and learned about these past few weeks. So they think that they got away with a blank card, but actually they're going to get a tough question. So we'll see how it goes. All right. If you have points on the board, line up. I got 18, 16, 21. You got a free card. You got four points. All right. You got one, you got three, two, you got one. How many do you have? Five. Five? You have one? Four. What was the name of the baseball player that we studied? Uh, Jimmy something. Jimmy? Three, two, one. Give me your card. You're out.
You have a free card too? Yes. Yeah. What was the name of the aerospace engineer from Colwood, West Virginia? He, it was, um, what's his name? Something started with the H. Uh-huh. Harold. Um, home. Homer um, Pickham. Very Pickham. good. Keep your point. This Chinese princess helped unite the northern and the southern dynasties. Mulan. Mulan? Mulan, he helped you, but that's good. You get to keep yours. Oh, wait, Cedric, Mulan, you have one? You have a free card? You have a free card? No, I don't. Okay, ready? Are you ready? What position did Jimmy Morris play when he became a major league baseball star? Pitcher. Very good. Keep your point. All right, so let's see. How many do you have? Three. One, three. One, good job, you're out. Not gonna be in the championship. Two, you're not gonna be in the championship. We gotta have the ones with the most. You two, Cedric. But you three that are not in the championship, you can help me, okay? All right, you've got five, how many do you have? Four, all right, how many do you have? Three. Okay, so five, four, and three. All right, so my friends that are gonna help me, my friends that are gonna help me, come over here. All right, what we're gonna do, is you, listen, each of you get to ask them one question about something we've learned about. Cedric, what's your question gonna be? Y'all need to go way over there. Can you ask them a question about something we've learned about this, this week? Hmm. What about this question? What kind of board have we been making? Does my brother have chest hair? No. What kind of board have we been making? Can you ask that question? What kind of board have we been making? Very good. All right. Uh, Make it a tough one. What was the name of the whale we studied yesterday? Oh, yes. That's a good one. What about you? What state was Jimmy Morris from? You think? Don't remember that? Texas. All right. All right. So who do you want to ask your question to? Dante, you, Dante, championship round, you got a question to answer. Y'all be quiet and listen. She's going to ask you a question. What state was Jimmy Morris from? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Morris. The Major League Baseball star we studied. I'm thinking Texas, right? Very good. You get to stay. All right. Uh, What was the name of the whale we studied yesterday? Do you know it? Okay, give me your cards. You did a good job. All right, y'all clap for Amber. She did a good job. All right, Michaela. Cedric. You get to ask Michaela the question you've been practicing. Okay, what was I going to say? What was the name of the? Oh, what was the name of the board? Board. Study. We've been creating. We've been creating. What's the name of the board we've been creating? What's your board? Very good. All right. You two go back. we got to have one really tough question. One really tough question. Let's see. How deep is this? Hmm. Did Let's see. Like oh, I got one. I got one. How fast did Jimmy Morris pitch? Remember his fastest? It was 90, 96 miles an hour. You remember that? All right, guys. All right, so we're going to do hands up. You ready? So who knows it first is going to put their hand up. Okay. How fast did Jimmy Morris pitch? 95. Not 95. Wasn't it 98? Not 98. Do you want to try again, Dante? 94? No, not 94. 97. No, not 97. All right, turn around. We're going to give you another question. Oh, that one was a good one. How deep is Vegeta's hairline in Dragon Ball Z? Let's see, what was the one? Uh, um, uh, oh, I know. Boy. Listen, Dante, or not Dante, Cedric, Dante. listen. What did Homer Hickam win oh, yes. Yes. nationally? He won the national what? Science fair. Okay. All right, come on. All right, so. What award did Homer Hickam win to get him recognized? Um, Michaela? First place. 
It's rocket scientist. Uh, not rocket scientist. Nope. Dante? Um, in like engineering type. Not engineering. What was that fair called? Science. The science fair. Very good. Dante's the winner. Everybody clap for Dante. He's the winner. So for the past few weeks, our uh, students have been learning about what it means to have a vision. We've been studying uh, well-known visionaries that ha actually have motion picture films after them. Um, this activity is effective because it creates a bridge from um, technology to writing to reading and then ultimately to a hands-on activity where they identify the visionaries. So it's been very fun for our students. My name is Amber Lewis and, the most, and I've enjoyed summer school very much. And my favorite activity that I've done in East Harden Middle School is in science with Mr. Harper. We have learned about the population and ecosystems and how they work. And we did an activity where we went outside and we could to chase people around and it was supposed to show the deer and the wolf population. And they're supposed to be wolves and they can have disabilities. And then there's wolves and you have to tag them and that means that they've been eaten. So it showed us how the population of the ecosystem works. Hi, I'm Nicholas Lankis and I'm going to, to seventh grade. And the things that I like the most about the summer school is that the fact that you get snacks and a lot of fun activities. The things that I have been doing throughout the school year is a bunch of, uh, lots of, lots of online work since COVID-19 is out, but my favorite subject so far is is the um, math because it's a since since it, um, since there's a bit of basic thing that you need to know like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and then after that you get to learn about fractions that may help you with your career work like uh, cooking and all that stuff, and then algebra, which is very important if you're wanting to be a very good scientist sooner or later. Hello, my name is Clark Van Zant, and this is my team. And we designed a solar cell, which is used to like harness energy from the sun to like use energy. And but we didn't have a sun, so we used a like yeah a fan, and we put on a string to like move it to, to uh, demonstrate that. And we designed ours with uh, aluminum, and then we have these like like wings on the side to like make it move faster or not faster but more make it move more and we had to use a a, a straw to put the string through and uh, we had to use uh, popsicle sticks to hold it all together usually a solar cell would use us solar power to travel through space but uh, obviously we couldn't use any solar power so instead we powered it uh, just the box fan. Um, so we put the string through here and the box fan would blow wind from here f this way and we would use the wings and the, um, the aluminum foil to, to push it forward and to get it as far as possible and um, we put these popsicle sticks here for structural integrity. Okay. Most, okay. Satell most satellites will use solar power to power them because it's cheaper than having to send batteries. Or gas. Or gas. Yeah. Great. This represents the solar cell, and the fan represents the sun, and it's supposed to represent a satellite, like, orbiting around the Earth, which the, which the fan being the sun, and our solar cell being, like, the solar cell. Okay. Our solar cell worked the best because we have the most surface area. Which uh, wouldn't isn't really that uh, accurate of how the sun would hit it, but um, due to it being hit by the wind, it just was pushed further. But, uh, I mean, it being lightweight could have something to do with it. Uh, that's how it would be affected if it was pushed by the sun. But hi, I'm Megan Hobbs. Um, I have planned and hosted the GT summer camp here at East Harden Middle School this year and the kids are really enjoying it. We started with um, an overall general theme of systems and how systems work, and we went into um, aeronautical engineering. So we're taking an emphasis on um, aircrafts and um, how uh, 
engineers trial and error and make rocket ships and helicopters and airplanes um, work in different atmospheres. Um, the kids have really enjoyed learning about the different um, concepts of thrust and drag and um, what makes uh, the motions of law work with the aircrafts. We enjoyed going to Western Kentucky University's planetarium yesterday to listen to a um, presentation by one of the professors there who explained to us about um, the missions to Mars with the 44 attempts and the 12 successes um, that they've had and spoke to us about how it took um, the engineers trying multiple attempts to uh, make the rockets land in a specific place on Mars. And then we also learned about the new um, innovation that they're using for the helicopters on Mars to discover um, different things on that planet. Tomorrow we will um, be able to venture up to Louisville for the Kentucky Flight Center where we are going to um, take a look at airplanes and um, how they work with the dynamics of the, the drag and the thrust and the um, force. And um, the kids have really just totally enjoyed learning about the dynamics of aircrafts and aeronautical engineers. And um, we are so excited to have had them and we plan to do this again in the future. Hello, my name is Jonathan Fitz and I'm gonna tell y'all what I've learned so far. I learned that rockets and planes and anything else that flies or moves has aerodynamics. There's fuel aerodynamics in rockets because that's what they need to blast. And that's pretty much all I've learned. Evan Hasty, um, I've learned about how planes and aerodynamics work, like how uh, you need to make it slim so it goes faster and then like other, like the the solar stem, solar cell, you need to like uh, make it bulkier so uh, air catches it. And uh, p uh, airplanes need to be like more aerodynamic so they can go uh, faster and uh, move better. So that's pretty much it. And this is the paper airplane I made a few minutes ago. All right. Uh, one thing we did was go to the WKU planetarium and we learned about the mission to Mars and how they got there and how many attempts that it took. Uh, one thing that I enjoyed learning about was the amount of failed attempts to make it to Mars and put a vehicle on there. There's 44 failed and 12 successful. It's important to know about Mars because it kind of retraces the steps of how, uh, what and how uh, uh, the solar system works, like we think there was uh, water sometime on Mars, so we, we are trying to uh, make, uh, trying to find evidence of existing water there. So uh, like they had a, I think they drilled uh, like, hole, like holes in the ground and took like Martian dirt and are trying to bring it back, but that was a failed mission, so I think they're trying to do something else with that. Hi, my name is Alexa Jenkins. I'm going into eighth grade next year. Um, I made this paper airplane first as a starter. Um, when I built it, I was really prepared. I knew the aerodynamics. Um, when I threw it, it was a little too heavy, so I decided to try a new one. This is what it looks like so far. It's a lot lighter than the, my first design, which will make it fly further. We went to a planetarium, and I really enjoyed his speech about the rovers and, um, at Mars. And um, I enjoyed learning about aerodynamics and what happens when a rocket goes and the helicopter uh, that is flying in Mars right now. First ever helicopter, pretty cool. Uh, summer camp has been beneficial to me because it taught me about space, which is a job that could really interest me in the future. It gives me a chance to learn about new jobs, and um, it's really cool. <laughs> um, now I'm going to show you the aerodynamics of both my planes. This is my redesigned one. 
They went higher and faster. Right. If it hadn't gone in that room, it would have gone farther. Too. Yeah, it would have gone farther if okay. it didn't fly in the room. Um, here at East Harden, we um, invited our gifted and talented students to come and join us for the summer camp. Um, all areas of giftedness were invited, including science, math, social studies, language arts, um, visual arts, performing arts, and general intellect. Um, 25 students have been participating, and they've been with us, us three teachers, um, all week long and um, we've had such a phenomenal time. We've really uh, taken our unit of study and focused on the science and math area, specifically in engineering, um, but overall we've had a phenomenal time and thank you for joining us here at East Hard Middle.